Hello and welcome to this quick introduction to Petsitter Dashboard. The purpose of this video is to give you a basic understanding of how the software works. The first page you'll reach when you log into Petsitter Dashboard is the dashboard itself. Here you can see that today I have no appointments. So let's go and put that right. Click here to book an appointment. First, select a customer, then select a service, then select the pets, the start date and the end date. Now Puddles only needs walking on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so I can untick the other days. And at this stage, I can see that this booking hasn't been confirmed by the customer. So this is just a preliminary booking. Puddles only needs walking once a day and the first visit is any time of day. So let's correct that. Let's actually say this is a lunchtime walk. There we go. I can check all the appointments here. I can override the appointment price here. So this is the price per appointment. Or I can just manually set the price. But be careful if you manually set the price because the appointment price won't be reflected in the subtotal. If you want, you can also add price adjustments, but that's more advanced, so go to one of our other videos to learn about those. Once you've finished, you can click Save, and now I can see my appointment today. These icons tell me that the customer hasn't confirmed the booking, and this other one tells me that the customer hasn't paid. So let's click on that and go to the invoice. So I can see the booking and the amount. If I want, I could add a line item. So maybe this is a um, late booking fee and it's just a fixed amount of five pounds. You can add as many line items to an invoice as you want. Down here, you can see the invoice itself and any of this blue text, you can click and change. You can even change this from an invoice to a quote you can change the invoice number, the date, you can add a deposit on, and you can change the date that the payment's due. At the bottom here, you can choose to print this booking or you can choose to send an email. So I'm gonna send this to Craig now. If I go back to the calendar, I can now see my appointments on the calendar for Tuesday and Thursday. I can also see that Caroline is, has a holiday on, uh, at lunchtime on Thursday. So if I try to assign this to Caroline, you can see it tells me there's a scheduling error. And if I view the holiday, you can see that Caroline is on vacation just this lunchtime. And if I save that, the appointment goes red to show me there's a scheduling error. So we can fix that by popping in and saying, well, Caroline's back in the afternoon, so we'll just move this appointment to the afternoon. There we go. While we're here, we'll just check out the calendar. You can either look at uh, all the appointments, each individual appointment, or you can just see a summary, which is a little bit easier to follow, but doesn't give you as much detail and doesn't break things down into appointments. Most of the time, you're gonna spend looking at the appointment view. You can look at a month view, you can look at a week view, and you can look at a day view. I find the week view the best. Down the bottom, there's a filter, and you can filter the calendar by service, by customer, and by team member. So if we head back to the dashboard, do you remember we've got that unpaid invoice? Well, good news is that Craig's paid. So let's head back to the invoice. And down here, I can just hit paid. And that'll record that there's been a five pound payment made because if you remember, there was a five pound deposit. So there we go, Craig's paid the deposit. And in actual fact, he's paid it through PayPal. Here we can now see the outstanding amount. So let's pay that as well. This was also a PayPal. And there we go, we can see we've got our two payments. You can also add payments 
ad hoc payments like this. So maybe he gave us five pound cash. But what this means now is he's overpaid by five pounds. So you can keep track of overpayments as well as underpayments. So let me just go in and delete that payment so it balances. There we go. The other thing I want to show you is the pet parent website. So this is a special website where your customers can go and view their details, view their um, pet details, and also um, see feedback from appointments. So let me just show you that. If I head to the dashboard and complete this appointment, what I get is a report card. And the report card just lets me record some basics about the visit. Um, and I can write some notes. Puddle was very well. Oops, behave today. There we go. And I can save that. I could also upload a photo if I wanted to. I can see now that the appointment is complete. And if Craig went to the pet parents website, he'd be able to see that appointment and see that appoint see that report card that I just filled in. Craig could also book services through the pet parents website. So you might want to set some things up before you start um, advertising your pet parents website. The first is the services. So the services just lets you add and remove services. The key thing here is that some services you might not want customers to book. So these are signs of services that can't be booked. To change that, you just click on the service and then it's this option here, which services can be booked through the pet parent website. The other thing you probably want to do is set your opening hours. So here we're open Monday, um, Monday morning, lunchtime, afternoon. And on the weekend, we just open um, in the morning. We don't do afternoon opening. What happens then is if Craig goes to make a booking, say uh, Tuesday afternoon to Sunday afternoon, he'll get a warning about us not being able to do service on a Saturday and Sunday afternoon. Now, Craig will still be allowed to place the booking, but he will have to accept that um, not all appointments can be met. And then it's entirely up to you uh, whether you accept that booking, whether you um, move the appointment to lunchtime uh, or whatever suits you. The important thing is that you are in control of these bookings. There's a video on the Pet Parents website, and I'd highly recommend you go and have a look at that next. Finally, I'm just going to show you the settings and give you a quick run through. Profile is just your personal settings, so basic information about you. The calendar link. This allows you to publish your appointments on your um, email calendar. So Outlook, Gmail, that sort of thing. Uh, and how that works is you'll see your pet sitting appointments in your um, social calendar as well. That's really handy. You can set up business information here. So this is basic information about your business, website, Facebook, that sort of thing. These settings, as it says here, they appear on things like your public profile and on um, invoices, that sort of thing. And none of this information is used for uh, marketing by Pet City Dashboard. Services we've already touched on. The customer agreement. So this appears when customers make bookings through the parents' website. Um, they just have to accept this agreement before they can um, place a booking. You can permanently change the text on invoices. Um, and the rest of it, I think I'll leave for now. So heading back to the dashboard, we can see we've got three unpaid invoices. We can see that we've had some failed emails. So if I just go and click on that and have a quick look, you can actually tell that um, Craig at petsitterdashboard.com doesn't actually exist. So the message hasn't been delivered, that's why. So that's really handy for keeping an eye on uh, your messages. You can actually click on that and resend messages as well. So if it was a temporary failure, uh, maybe their mailbox was full, you could resend that at a later date. The final one is the report card, report card photos. 
So if you remember, when I went into the report card, I can upload a photo. Well, here, you've got all the photos that have been uploaded in the last 28 days. Report card photos are available for around 28 days before they're deleted. So this is handy if you want to send these on social media. Pick some nice pictures to um, download and share. OK, well, that's it for today. Um, the final thing I'll say is that this uh, Petsitter dashboard is available on the web in the app. It's exactly the same application, whether you're running um, the website or the app, whether you're running it on a desktop or on mobile. If you have any questions over here, you can hit contact. This will launch our contact page where you can send us a message. Uh, we do um, try to reply to messages within 24 hours.